Welcome to this edition of Feedstuff's Food Link. I'm Sarah Muirhead. If the walls of this old barn could only talk, they would surely share with you the story of how over the past century they've been home to dairy cows supplying milk to Chicago, as well as pigs supplying pork across the nation. Back in the days when pigs could be found in this space, as well as on the concrete lot just behind the barn, or in the farrowing house that used to stand directly before me, group housing of sows was the norm. Today, most producers of pork keep their sows indoors, where they're protected from the elements, as well as from predators, and in many cases, from each other. You see, sows have a tendency to fight when they're put in groups, and the more aggressive ones do not hesitate to do whatever it takes to establish the dominant position in a group. Since such aggression can be dangerous for those working with sows, as well as for the sows themselves, most sows have been kept in individual stalls rather than in group pens over the last several decades. Scientist Janine Saluk Johnson recently talked with us about her work in evaluating a variety of housing options for sows. Her goal is to provide the pork industry with some much needed answers. As a scientist, if you look through all the research which has been done, and there's two problems with it. it most of the research that has been conducted to this point has simply compared individual gestation stall, the standard gestation stall, to group housing. And if they've looked at anything specific about group housing or pens, I should say, group pens, it's been um, feeding systems. There's been little data um, showing, you know, what is the floor space allowance? What is the number, what's the ideal group size? Nobody's looked at a lot of measures of well-being. Um, and if it's really about finding a system that improves the sow's welfare or her well-being, there isn't a system out there yet. The University of Illinois is looking at sows in standard gestation stalls and adjustable flex stalls to evaluate behavior and productive performance. One of the major modifications that we're looking at is not so much um, increasing the length, but increasing the, um, the width of the gestation stall. We have a prototype stall that um, a colleague of mine at the University of Wisconsin designed for us. And the, the thinking behind that was the fact that from mid-gestation to late gestation, the um, sow grows a tremendous amount. Um, I don't know what the total amount is, but it's, it's a couple millimeters a day um, from mid to late gestation. And so we thought about, well, if you give her more depth, um, will that improve her well-being? And so we have a study going on right now where we're comparing the, um, looking at sows in the standard gestation stall, sows in this prototype, what we call the flex stall, um, and then the free access stall. But the biggest difference between the flex stall and the standard gestation stall is you can actually increase that width while the sow's in there. And we only increase it when the sow, um, when the sow truly needs it. We have some um, uh, guidelines that tells us if she's touching at a certain, in a certain position, then we decide to increase. And it's only millimeters. It's not a lot that you increase it. And we have found that the larger sows seem to benefit from that increased width. U.S. pork producers today are raising their pigs in a variety of ways, and researchers at the University of Illinois think that's a good thing. Producers should have choices. They, they're the experts. They're raising the pigs. They're doing a job nobody else wants to do. And so we need to help them do that job to the best of their ability. The Illinois work will have broad implications for the entire U.S. pork industry, and it will help pork producers address efforts on the legislative front, where some are looking to put restrictions on housing options. This is really about improving sow welfare. Um, this whole argument, this whole issue, um, absolutely. There is no, we have no justification right now for passing solid legislation banning the gestation stall. Because once that ban occurs, it's gone. I mean, these other systems are gestation stalls. And we still don't know, do you even, even if you can't use it for the duration of gestation, you still may need it for those first 30 days. Um, the most critical time points for implantation, that's when most um, losses occur. And we actually have some work where we're look, looking at that as well. While this work certainly does not solve all the issues, 
and is the first attempt in the pork industry to look at the various housing systems. The ultimate goal, according to researchers, is to find what's best for the South. And very few people look at it from a integrative approach about really measures about the South's, South's well-being. I mean, you know, we like to get stuck on behavior, um, you know, sow behavior. Well, behavior doesn't equal welfare, and welfare doesn't equal behavior. So this is a real challenge for us that um, we need to find a system that improves the well-being. We have a lot of different pieces to the puzzle. We just have to finish collecting the data and then try to put all those pieces together.